Number four, uh, I'm going to read a few verses, but let's read one verse first. Let's read verse number 43. Hallelujah. Read it again. Look for verse 43. This was Jesus speaking. He says, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also because for this purpose I have been sent. Uh, Hallelujah. So Jesus, Jesus Christ, says to us, the purpose why he was sent, the reason he came, was to preach the kingdom of God. What we share with you, the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now, it's very important, as a child of God, to understand what the kingdom of God is because you are a child of the kingdom Jesus speaks in the book of Matthew chapter number 6 from verse number 33 it says this seek ye first the kingdom of God seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and everything else will follow. Seek the kingdom of God. Now you have to understand what the kingdom is. The kingdom is the rulership of a king. The kingdom of God is the rulership of God. And Jesus says, find out how God rules. Find out how God rules. And then, everything you are looking for will simply manifest. Because the way God rules, He used the same system to create everything. Which means, if you can get empowerment of the rulership of God, everything will obey you. Because everything God created will always respond to the words of God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ spoke to everything created. Jesus Christ spoke to the wind, spoke to the storm, spoke to the fish spoke to the trees spoke to the bread Jesus spoke to everything and everything responded to what Jesus said he says seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and everything will follow seek the kingdom of God and it's righteousness, Bible. It is a Bible. The Bible. Yeah. And everything will follow. Everything will follow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, I've come to preach the kingdom. A few verses before, but before that, he says, I've been anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. Which means, in the rulership of God, 
in the domain of God, they should not be the poor. There shouldn't be any poor. In the realms of the kingdom of God, in the realms, in the realms of the domain of God, they shouldn't be the poor. Hallelujah. Which means you and I, we are destined to live the blessed lives. Now, you have to understand your kind of blessing is the kind of blessing that God vowed to give to you. You are a child of a vowed blessing. That's why when you understand, when you have the revelation of what God has said concerning you, you live victoriously all your life. Preaching, it's a wonderful thing. But the preaching must reveal the life of God. And also release the life of God. That's what the purpose of preaching is. Because Jesus said, His words are life. They are life. They are life. They are life. Which means you must receive life. You, you must receive life. Hallelujah. Seek the kingdom of God. Jesus came to preach the kingdom of God where there is freedom. The Bible says, know the truth and the truth makes you free. Which means the desire of God is for your freedom. It's for your freedom. But the majority of the people, they are not free. A lot of people are not free. Hallelujah. Even in this room, a lot of people are not free. Ha Hallelujah. Some people have financial troubles. They are not free in the realms of finances. Some of them in families. Some of them in marriages. Some of them in friendships. Different issues around their lives. There is still lack of freedom for a lot of people. And the Lord says, He wants you to be free. He said, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. So every one of you must live a life that is free. A stress free life. You shouldn't be stressed. You should live freely. Look at the person sitting next to you and tell them you must be free. Hallelujah. In the book of Exodus, the children of Israel, they find themselves in bondage. They, they, they are in Egypt. And for 400 years, they have been in bondage. They have been oppressed. But God does not want them to be oppressed. Then God finds one man, just one single man, to send to go free the people. Which means, most of the time, for God to set a nation free, he doesn't necessarily need a lot of people. He needs only one willing person. One willing person. It doesn't matter whether it's a man or a woman. When the, children, when the Jews were in trouble, God raised one young lady. Her name was Esther. So that he can set the whole people free. So God is not looking at whether you are female or male. God is looking for, God is looking for a willing vessel. 
anyone who is willing to be used by God to make a difference. So God raises one person. God does not like when people are in bondage. Hallelujah. So God sent Moses to to Egypt. Egypt to challenge the force. I mean Moses to challenge the forces of Egypt. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when you are closer to God, when you seek the rulership of God, when you seek the kingdom of God, and you come closer to God, the domain of God, the power of the kingdom of God resides within your life. And from that moment, you can challenge any force. It really doesn't matter what it is. First, first of all, let us understand this. The devil is not really powerful. In fact, the devil has no power. At all. He doesn't have power at all. He used to have power after he deceived Eve and, and Adam. He had power. But when Jesus went to the cross and was crucified and Jesus rose from the dead, he stripped the devil of every power. That's why Jesus said, all power, all power, not some power, all power, which means if Jesus has all the power, it means the devil has nothing. It means the devil has no power. But now, the, pro- the problem is, the devil has a reputation. Has a reputation of harassing people for years. So, so sometimes, when, when something has a reputation, even when they cannot perform anymore they can still be the belief that they can perform hallelujah so the, the enemy the devil has a reputation that he harasses people but now he doesn't have the power but be, sometimes be, because of his reputation people become afraid they become afraid of the devil even when he doesn't have power anymore so most people they end up stopping themselves by believing that he has the power when they don't when he doesn't have any more this is why God's people must understand the word of God must hear the word of God must understand what God is saying because sometimes we can end up believing in something that has no power at all anymore and be afraid of something that has no power at all hallelujah hallelujah so the devil has no power anymore because all power is with Jesus when Jesus Christ died for three and a half days he he took all that the devil has stolen and gave it to you all the power that was taken he restored it back to you so that you can walk in it so what happens is this 
mo- most people they don't try to find out what Jesus has given them. They keep on believing the past. They don't realize they are victorious. Hallelujah. Now, how does the devil get power? The devil gets power when you give it to him. When you give it to him. You have to understand your belief, your faith is a very powerful thing. Whatever you believe in, you empower that thing to rule your life. Whatever you believe will control your life, will rule your life. And if you believe the devil is powerful, you are giving him the power of your belief. This is, what, this is what happened from the beginning. It was Adam and Eve that handed power to the devil because he deceived them. You and I are in charge. The planet is ours. God gave it to us to exercise the rulership of God here. Now watch this. When God created everything and he creates man, God said, let them have dominion. When God gave you rulership on earth, he excluded himself so that you can have the freedom to rule. And and when God said that, he was speaking to the person who walks in his attributes and character. God was speaking to the person who had his nature. So all you have to do is seek God. Seek the rulership of God. And then you will see the empowerment of the authority of God through you. When I was a young man in Christianity, and I started reading the Bible, I found a lot of things. And one of the things I found was this. God makes himself available. To every of his children. God is making an invitation for us to come to him. God is making an invitation for us to develop a relationship with him. When God calls us, he calls us to himself. He calls us to himself because he wants to impart into our lives. So when I found that out, my passion, my hunger, my thirst was to know him, was to know God, was to walk with God, was to understand everything about what his purpose. And I'm still learning because the mind of God is, is much huge. There is no end to it. But the good thing is, the good thing is, in that mind, is goodness. Goodness towards you. Goodness towards me. 
So this goodness in God's mind concerning our lives has no end. It continues on and on and on and on. So when God saw the children of Israel in Egypt, he wanted to set them free. So he chose one person. This person came had an encounter with God. An encounter that transformed his life. One of the things I advise Christians to do is that they should pray. And one of the most important prayers in your life is to ask for an encounter with God. It's very, very important. Because a Christian who doesn't have an encounter with God will never get to know God. They will only know religion. They will only know what people are telling them. At some stage in your life, you want to be able to hear God yourself. Because God's plan is to speak to every one of us. God wants to speak to every single one of you. And the truth is, God does speak to every one of you. Every day. Every single day. God speaks to every one of you. The problem is, you have not known how to hear him. You have not known how to hear him. Because you haven't had an encounter. All throughout the scripture, all men and women of God had an encounter with God. They desired an encounter. Moses is walking. He sees the burning bush. He had an encounter with God. Now, let me say this to you. Encounters with God, once you have an encounter with God, don't expect many people to believe you. Because because encounters with God are supernatural things. They are unbelievable to the natural mind. Now imagine this. If you were walking like in, uh, in Jinan in one of the mountains and you were walking and all of a sudden you see a tree. It's on fire but it's not being consumed and you come closer and out of the tree comes out a voice it's a take off your shoes because you're stepping on holy ground and you take off your shoes and you start the, tree, the, 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 the voice from the burning tree talk to you who do you think is going to believe you when you tell them is anybody going to believe you? Nobody's going to believe you. When you. They're going to think you lost your mind. How can the tree on fire speak to you? Hallelujah. 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 Imagine this. You are 15 years old. Your your daughter is 15 years old. And all of a sudden, your daughter is pregnant. And you ask your daughter, who is responsible? And your daughter says, God is responsible. Even you, you will not believe your daughter. You wouldn't believe them. Because an encounter with God is a supernatural thing. That's why it's meant for you alone. It it is meant to change your life. 
So when you are praying for an encounter with God, you have to prepare yourself for something extraordinary to happen. Some, something very supernatural to happen. Hallelujah. And when it happens to you, don't be in a rush to talk to people about it. Imagine this. You are going somewhere with your friends. And all of a sudden, the heavens are open. You fall on the ground. And you hear a voice talk to you. Many people will not believe you. Hallelujah. Men will not believe you. Now, you have to pray for an encounter with God. Something so extraordinary that even you, it will reveal to you and change you that God really is real. It is not just enough. It is not enough to go to seminary school or to go to Bible college. It's not enough. You need something more than Bible school. You need something more than seminary. If you are going to be the vessel of God. Because you are not the vessel of education. You are the vessel of the life of God. You are the vessel of the reality of God. No. Now understand me. Yeah, of course you have to go to school. You have to acquaint yourself with the scriptures. But seminary or Bible college will never give you an encounter with God. They will just teach you what they understand. And what I know is this. Most people who teach in seminaries, most of them are not even filled with the Holy Ghost. Most of them are not even filled with the Spirit. They teach, they teach from carnal understanding. They don't teach from the supernatural understanding. Now, of course, you still have to go to school. Because you want to know where each scripture is. They will not give you an encounter with God. It is, your, it is your responsibility to be hungry for God. Jesus said, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Which means, if you are hungry to be in right standing with God, God will give you that opportunity. Hallelujah. When I read the scripture and I, I hear about these encounters this man had Moses with God on the mountain, Elijah, Elijah calling fire from heaven. Ezekiel's eyes open to see the to see God. I mean, when I read the scriptures, it makes me more hungry. If God can do it with Moses, he can do it with me and you. If God can do it with Jeremiah, he can do it with me and you. Now, also, if God can do it with Jesus, he can do it with you and me. Because Jesus himself said, if we believe in him, the things he did, we will do also. Which means, 
You can do anything that Jesus did. It is, it is not my words. It is the word of God. Jesus himself said, if you believe in him, what he did, you can do also. That's what Jesus said. Which means, you can raise the dead like Jesus did. You can heal the sick like Jesus did. You can do it. That's what he said, Jesus. Okay. Go to John. The book of John, chapter number 14. John chapter 14. Let's read verse number 12. Wait for them to get it. Verse number 12. Let's all read together and read to understand. He said, the, Jesus said, He who believes in me, the works I did, he will do also. Even greater works than this. Which means you are capable of doing what Jesus did. Let's go to Matthew. I want to show you something. Matthew chapter number 10. Let's, let's read uh, verse number 5, 6, 7, 8. Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Verse 5, 6, 7, 8. 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's all read together. It's a loss of signal. Don't worry about it. It's a loss of signal. Go ahead. There's nothing you can do. It's frequency. It's not battery. Yeah. You can move forward a little bit. It's frequency. It's not battery. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ sent his disciples. He, this is a command he gave them. He said, heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Freely you have received. Freely give. That's a very powerful thing. Which means, Jesus is saying to them, you can do this. You can do this. And the scripture says, when they came back, it's okay, it's just frequency, it's not the battery. It's just frequency. The battery is okay. Hallelujah. Amen. And then Jesus said, Go do this. They went. They went. When they came back, they were excited. They said to Jesus, Oh, the demons were obeying us. Everything was happening. Which means, you and I have the ability to do these things. But, but the problem is, religion says, you cannot do them. Religion says you can't. Now we understand, it is the ability of God 
that he has put inside of you. But the problem is when you separate yourself from God you will not be able to. Hallelujah. You can do these things when you understand that you are part of the kingdom you are part of the family of God you have right standing with God you can do everything Moses did you can do everything Elijah did you can do everything Paul did you can do everything John did and you can do everything Jesus did because once the Holy Ghost comes upon you he will manifest these things the only two things you need to do these things is the word of God is the word of God and the spirit of God those are the only two things you need if, if you have those two things in your life you are unstoppable nothing can stop you but when I, when I say the word of God I'm not just I'm not just talking about the letters the logos I'm talking about understanding revelation when you have the understanding of what the word says when you come when you come to the understanding of the mind of God and you begin to speak things through the mind of God everybody can quote the scripture everybody can quote the verse from the Bible it, do, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for them what what will make the verse work for you is when you have the understanding of it when you have when you have when you have the revelation of it so when you have revelation when you have understanding you speak with confidence you, de- you decree with confidence and things begin to happen and things begin to happen this is why sometimes you find people in church they quote scriptures nothing is happening in their lives because they don't have an understanding they don't they don't have the revelation 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 will lead you to manifestation the logos the logos you read the logos you read requires you to be in prayer to understand what God is saying after you know what God is saying and you have a full understanding inside of you arises the faith of God and when the faith of God arises in you you are now begin to release declarations you begin to command you begin to command let me say this to you you no longer ask watch Jesus watch Jesus in the Bible Jesus Christ you don't see him asking you see Jesus commanding you see Jesus releasing declarations why because Jesus had an understanding he knew what is supposed to be done so when you ask God ask God for understanding ask God for the revelation of what you are reading and then when you receive it and when your faith arises in you 
begin to release declarations begin to decree begin to decree and when you decree everything created that you are speaking to begins to respond to your words in other words let's say for example let's say for example you are looking for financial breakthroughs or you are looking for healing breakthroughs what do you have to do is take the Bible go through the Bible and find out every scripture that talks about healing find, or find a scripture that talks about finances and begins to pray ask God to explain to you what his mind is concerning those scriptures now when you get the mind of God there arises a confidence inside of you and now you begin to decree you begin to declare because now you begin to find out it is the will of God for you to have those sins you begin to see that it's the plan of God remember the first day when I came here I said this to you you have the life of God in you so if you have the life of God in you it means sickness cannot live inside of you it, it is not permitted because the life of God will push it out completely out hallelujah hallelujah you are the house of God God lives inside you so God is not going to share his house with anything hallelujah God sent his word to heal us I send my word to heal their diseases God said when you serve him he will bless your bread and bless your water and none of the sicknesses that are upon the Egyptians will come upon you God said Jesus Christ suffered so that you cannot suffer just to mention a few things when you begin to understand this then you get the mind of God God does not want sickness to live in us God does not want the diseases of the world to be upon us Jesus Christ suffered so that I don't have to suffer this so when you begin to see these things your confidence arises like, these things are not supposed to be in my life so now when your confidence arises now you begin to release declarations and decrees you are not supposed to be in my body sickness the Bible said the spirit of God quickens our mortal bodies that means it releases life so now when you begin to see these sins confidence arises and you keep on saying it you keep on declaring it you keep on speaking it you keep on saying it remember what we read this afternoon this book of the law will not depart from your mouth you keep on saying it with all confidence and sooner or later your body begins to restructure itself why the word of God begins to align it 
And then they begin to be cell regeneration. Everything begins to work. Everything begins to work. Everything begins to work. And sooner or later, you are happy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say for finances. God said he rejoices in the prosperity of his people. So when you are prosperous, God is joyful. God is happy. When he's jo- when you're jo- when, when God said, I will not only give you wisdom and understanding, I will give you wealth too. So it is the desire of God to give you wealth. God said to the children of Israel who were in Egypt who did not even believe God. He says, I will give you favor and you will go to the Egyptian houses and you will take all their wealth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God gave them wealth. We can go through instances through the scriptures. So you begin to realize it is God's desire. It is God's plan. I mean, God said to Abraham, I will bless your seed. God vowed. God vowed. I will bless your seed. Which means God's desire, God's purpose, God's plan, everything about God wants you to live the life of blessings. Wants you to live the life of success. And he is committed to it. So when you understand these things and you decree the scriptures, you begin to see the Holy Ghost move. The power is released. And the favor of God comes upon you. And when favor comes upon you, then things begin to work in your favor. Things begin to come to you. Things begin to come to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? These things, they are available to you. You just have to declare them. But first, you must understand this purpose and this mind and of God. And the mind of God is not cheap. It is not cheap. God will give you his secrets when you are closer to him. You don't tell anyone your secrets unless you're close to them. You only tell people you're close to your secrets. If you have a secret of success, you don't just give it to everybody. You give it to people that honor you, that respect you, and that, I've, uh, uh, that you have a relationship with. And relationship is established by conversations. We have to commune. We have to talk with each other. And God, this is why we call it prayer. Prayer is not just about asking material things. The purpose of prayer was to share your heart with God. As you talk to him, he shares his heart with you. So you keep talking to each other. And as the relationship develops, God begins to share the secret of success with you. God begins to show you his mind. God begins to show you these things. This is when prayer becomes fruitful. Mm. 
Not the kind of prayer where you just tell God your problems. Ah, Lord, I have this problem. 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 That is not prayer. It's not really prayer. When you begin to understand the mystery of prayer, it's you are interested in each other with God. There is love. There is oneness. Hallelujah. Some people say prayer is hard. Prayer is difficult. No, 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 no. Prayer is not hard. Prayer is not influenced by need. It must be influenced by love. I'm a married man. It's not hard to talk to my wife. Because I love her. And I enjoy conversations with her. And we talk all the time. The same applies to God. I love him. So what draws me to him, what brings me to God, is the love which I share with him. It's easier to talk to people you love. Very easy. So when I, when we keep on talking, sooner or later we know each other. You can never know each other unless you are talking to each other. So you have to commune with God. And, and we call it prayer. But the religion has made it a ritual. In other words, you have this time to pray. Once you say amen, you have finished praying. You have to come again after about the, another hour, two hours, three hours. So it becomes a ritual. So it becomes professional thing. Hallelujah. Prayer for me. I pray all the time. In other words, I can be walking and I say, and I will talk to God. Lord, you know, I don't understand one, two, three things. What is it about? Whether it's in the mall, whether I am at a department store, or whether I am inside the grocery store, or I'm inside the taxi, I'm in the train, I'm walking in the street. I don't bring those these formalities of ritual things. We are always in conversation. Lord, I'm going to the department store. Let's go together. Let's have this conversation together. And then we walk around. I walk around. I'm communing with God. Hallelujah. Some people might look at me and they say, something is wrong. He's, he's talking by himself. Oh, look at him. Ha! Ah, life is too difficult. Look at how people are losing their minds. But me, at that moment, I'm communing, I'm communing with God. Let me give you a story. It's a testimony. It's a testimony, and then I'll pray for you. One day, I was uh, walking in the mall. In, in a department store, like a big. So I'm walking, shopping mall, I'm walking. 
And I'm, I've been talking to the Lord. And the Lord, uh, there was a there was a, a lady in a particular store. So I'm talking to the Lord. And the Lord gave me her name and told me what the problem was and the store she said. So, so I'm talking to the Lord and while I'm talking to the Lord this lady she was with her friends and they saw me and they, and they thought I was a crazy man. They felt like I should have been locked in a psychiatric ward. Kept with crazy people. Because I was talking by myself. So I'm walking and I came and when I came to that store and I could tell that they, all of them were uncomfortable because they thought maybe I was crazy I might break things and I cause trouble that I might cause trouble so they were cautious they kind of like stepped back and how they talked to me so I looked at the lady and, and I said to her the Lord told me your name is this and you have been suffering from one, two, three things for some time and this is what happened with your daughter this is what happened with your husband and this is what has been going on in your life and I just start telling her what happening and she starts crying and she starts crying so every one of them is shocked and they are standing there and I said with her what the Lord said and I prayed for her and before I left they said to me we want to confess we just thought you were a madman talking by yourself walking up and down and I said to them oh no I was talking to the Lord he's the one who was telling me what's going on so it works like that for me now of course you go to church you learn how to pray first from there you develop a conversation and you talk throughout with the Lord in fact talking with the Lord will keep your mind calm hallelujah I enjoy talking to the Lord because he's so good to me the Lord never says anything terrible to me never he just tells me good things about me he just tells me wonderful things about me hallelujah hallelujah people don't usually say a lot of stuff good things when people come to you they look at you they say oh you are beautiful but they always say that oh your makeup is beautiful but you should uh, fix it here a little bit oh your dress is nice but I think a green color will look better on you the white one is not really gray people they are always looking for something that is not right and every time you say something and you say but you are saying whatever I said before forget it what I really mean is what I'm going to say now hallelujah but God doesn't do that God will tell you you are the apple of my eye you are my you, I'm, I've chosen you you are my princess you are my king you are the best thing you are wonderfully and fearfully made you are the crown in my jewel 
That's how God speaks to you. I've created you to rule. I've given you power. I delight in you. I rejoice in your prosperity. That's what God says to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People don't usually say that. When they look at you, God is going to judge you. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what they say. God is going to judge you. Yeah, you're, you're going to hell. Hallelujah. That's what they do. That's what they do. That's what people do. Because many a times, they don't understand the heart of God. They don't understand the mind of God. That's why they're too harsh on themselves. I'm going to say something that will shock you. God, blessing upon your life, it's not, it's not because you prayed hard. God doesn't bless you based on your actions. God blesses you based on your revelation of his love. He blesses you because he loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, people say this. God will not give you a lot of money until he trusts you. God already trusts you. Hallelujah. The children of Israel, God already knew that they are going to build an idol with the blessing that he gives them. God already knew. But he still blessed them. He still gave them blessings. You see, many Christians, they are waiting for God to trust them. I have to I have to work on my cleanness before God can bless me. You will wait forever. Hallelujah. Your righteousness, your cleanness does not come from your works. Your cleanness comes from, comes from what Jesus did. So the blessing in your life, you don't have to work for it. Because working for your blessing it's a sign of a curse. God, Jesus already paid for your blessing. You just have to come into the love of God and just receive it. And just receive it. And just receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I have my blessing. Amen. Say, I have my blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Stop waiting and be this good according to your own side. No. You are hindering yourself from the blessings of heaven. Just receive them. Just receive them. Just receive the blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Just receive the blessing. Just receive the blessing. The people in the world, they don't wait until they are clean to get the blessing. The people in the world, they don't wait to be right, right to get the blessing. Hallelujah. 
the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. The blessing comes upon everyone. Whoever will have them is the one who receives them. Whoever will have the blessing is the one who receives it. Christians don't know how to receive. Because because, because religion religion has taught you that you have to be somehow uh, in a certain holy righteous in a certain way before you can get your blessing that's why Christians continue to have nothing hallelujah but when you understand God blesses you out of his love you prosper. Look at an even say, I am righteous. Look at an even say, I am holy. Say, I am holy. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are not waiting to be holy. You are already holy. Because of Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you understand that, then you will live like a holy person. If you don't understand that, you will try to be holy by your own works. And you will not experience the fullness of God. Hallelujah. 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 You are blessed. 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 Hallelujah. That's why I'm happy. I'm happy all the time. I am. Because, because my father is a king. My father owns everything. Do you know the kind of gift my father gave me? My father looked at me and he says, I love you. And I'm going to give you a gift. And out of the universe, he chose a planet called F. And he says, here's a blessing for you. Everything that is inside this planet belongs to you. Rule it. Now, why shouldn't I enjoy it? So, let us pray. I want you to, let's pray for your offerings first. Let's pray for your offerings first. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray for your offerings. And then after that, we are